Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial walkthrough for the Flutterflow app development uh, suite. Uh, I recently got invited to this, so it's a brand new project. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still in beta and they're having limited users, but I was one of the lucky few that got in. And so today I want to show you what uh, it looks like in case you haven't gotten an invitation yet. So upon logging into Flutterflow, we see a uh, create project dashboard. Uh, there's apparently one app already in here, which I looked at earlier. Uh, and so let's get started with the project. They have a tutorial that you can run through. So I'm going to start that project here. Uh, they have their welcome to Flutter, yada, yada. You can go ahead and read that if you want, but I'm going to skip it for now. Uh, just a lot of words that say welcome to our app. Uh, so upon first logging in, you'll notice that on the left side you have a widget tree, which has all the familiar widgets uh, if you're experienced in coding Flutter. I'll be honest, I've only actually been coding Flutter for a few months and, I, and I'm already pretty familiar with these. So, And then over here we have a templates chart. And what does that say? Okay, so if you need ideas for things to do with your app. You can follow along with any one of these. Or you can use these kind of as a template. Uh, it doesn't look like you can click on them. I'm not able to click on them. Maybe someone else can or figure it out. But for now, those are the widgets. Um, there's a widget tree. And the widget tree is where you start nesting all your widgets. And we'll see that in action a little bit later. There's an action tab uh, where you can start setting uh, you know, on tap and on hold kind of commands and seeing what happens there. Uh, in the app settings, these are your defaults for the app environment. Uh, really, one really neat thing they have is Firebase configuration. So you can start a Firebase project, which, uh, yeah, allows you to add in all your configurations for that. And then as well as a user authentication through Firebase. So that's pretty awesome that that's built right in. Um, more Firebase configuration collections. Okay. Uh, and they have this animations tab, which I think is going to be a, a premium service. So animations aren't natively part of the free version. Uh, so you'll have to try and pay for those. I've already requested to try to pay for those. So we'll see if I get approved. Anyways, back to the tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on their out-of-the-box tutorial. It looks like it's a coffee uh, app. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and start that tutorial. So uh, it's really cool. They have these steps. And in only 10 steps, you can set up your first app if you've never uh, used Flutterflow before. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through this in case you're having troubles with it. Uh, you can try to follow me along as well. Uh, so you select the empty page. And you select the color. Uh, the first instruction is to set it to pound E6, 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 which is white. So we set it to white. Uh, ensure that the properties are off here. Uh, okay, save area, show on nav bar. I don't see the show app bar button. Maybe somebody can comment in the, uh, in the comments below and tell me where it is, but I've never been able to find it. Um, in step two we have to add a custom app bar. So we're not going to use this traditional app bar that's here with the back button and everything set up for you. We're going to make our own. So how that's going to work is we're going to drag a column widget onto the canvas, uh, add a container, which is going to contain more widgets in there. And I think it's really cool that you're able to interactively build these widgets as opposed to having to build it through code. And while Flutter does have things like hot reload, this is still, you know, one step faster than that. Okay. So we have to set that container's color to white, uh, the width to infinity. You set that by clicking down here in this width and height uh, area. Uh, and it's height to 140. All right. Uh, okay. So on to step three, add a row into the container. Okay. So let's hopefully I dropped that correctly. Am I in the container? You look at the widgets tree, you can see, oh, yep, I'm in the container. Great. Set its main axis alignment to space between. Okay. And its cross axis alignment to end. Awesome. 
finally set its padding to 15, 0, 15, 20. So that's left, top, right, and bottom padding. Just get a nice centered uh, row there. Okay, custom app bar. All right, add a column into the row. So now I have to find a column widget, and that looks like these three stoplights. So add this into the row. Make sure you don't add it into the container. You want to add it into the row. Uh, and set its main axis alignment to end and cross axis alignment to start. Great. Also add a circle image into the row. Okay. Circle image is here. Gotta make sure we add it into the row. Great. Awesome. It got set right in there. Set the image radius to 80, so we're going to make it a little bit smaller and set the box fit to cover and set the URL path. Okay, the URL path is already set, so I'm just going to leave it as that as opposed to trying to change it in the interest of time. Okay, on step five. In step five, we have to do our text, so we're going to add text into the column. So that's this widget here, and it highlights when you hover over it, if you haven't noticed. Um, set the title or set the theme text to title one. Ooh, that's a nice big bold letter there. Uh, set the text to profile so you can change that up here. Uh, one thing that's also interesting is that you can change the name of the widget right here. So if we were to call this title text, when we go to our widget tree, it actually appears as that in our widget tree and that's really helpful for keeping things in order okay and set its text to profile select the text element underneath profile and tap tap the simple color picture select the text oh I forgot to add that other text element there we go all right and go to the simple color picker for that one and select the blue gray color and set its text to recent measurements. So we're going to set this to recent measurements. Great. All right. We have an app bar just like that. Step six. First list item. Add a container into the outermost column. Okay. Outermost column. Okay. I think that is the outermost column. Let's double check in our widget tree. Are we? Yep, we're indeed in that. Great. Okay. And place it under the app bar. Set its width to infinity. Okay. You fill it horizontally. Fill color to pound FFF. Is that enough Fs? I always forget how many Fs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Great. We're white. Awesome. Uh, this top container isn't white for some reason. Maybe I forgot to set it. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, great. All white. And it's border color to that kind of off-white color. Oh, okay, so it's... uh. Barely visible off-white color, add a row into this container and set its main axis. So we're going to add a row into this container, set its main axis to the space between, and give it a left-right padding. So left, right padding. So that kind of centers that uh, row container. Great. Step seven. Add a text element into the first list item in the row. So you add that right there, and we're going to type in pour, oops, over Kilseno, Kilenzo, ah, it doesn't matter, but it matters. Uh, set the font size to 18. Awesome. Add a column into the same row. Okay, we're going to add something maybe here. Looks like we're going to add two things into this. One's going to be a text element at the top and a text element below it. Okay. For the top text element, we're going to say it's 19.5%. Uh, 
theme textile to subtitle one. Where is that? Theme textile, subtitle one. Awesome. And font family to Monserrato. Ah, look at all these Google fonts. Oh, I'm so happy to see these. Okay, great. So, Mons, Montserrat, Montser, Montserrat. All right. Got that. The bottom text to espresso, and it's colored blue gray like before. And blue gray is down here. So, uh, no, not there. In the simple palette, blue gray. Great. All right. Uh, I forgot to set the spacing of this to space evenly. All right. So I rather, I think that this should be bold. So I'm going to bold it because that's what it looks like in the little picture there. I'm going to play with these and I'm going to make it black because I like black more anyways. All right. There we go. That pops a little bit better. Ah, and then right click the first list item in the container. And you can copy it right there. Ooh, copy paste. Ooh, that didn't copy and paste right quite what I wanted. We want this whole thing right there and right there. Oh, look at that. You can, this is like making, you know, 20 lines of code at once. That's awesome. And you can go ahead and go through those and change the text in each one of these by simply clicking on them. I'm going to save you time and not do that in this video. Um, add a bottom column. In order to position, there's going to be a button at the bottom. So we're going to put in this column here. Set it, set it to expand it in the alignment section. Oh, they expanded. Oh, so that fills the screen. And set its padding to 20 at the bottom. So it gives it a little padding and its main axis alignment to end. So we're starting to fill it from the bottom. And then the last thing is to add a button here. So we're going to add a button at the bottom. Awesome. Set its width to infinity. But we're probably going to want to give it some left and right padding. So we're going to add some padding on the left and right hand sides to bring it in a little bit. Uh, where's the fill color? Uh, do 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 fill colors here and we'll leave it as is for now. We'll just change it just for fun. Remove the icons, set the text to measure copy. Okay, so we have to remove the icon. None, uh, no icon. Okay, so there's no icon on it. Set the text measurement. Where is that text measurement? There it is. All right, to measure coffee, the font color to white, and the font size to 15, or six, 16. And that's down here. Oh, oh, that's done. That was great. Um, and I think that's the whole app. So that's super cool. Look how quickly we were able to make this uh, list page uh, with the button at the bottom. Now, if you wanted to add an action, uh, I'm going to go one step above and beyond and say, I want to add an action. So you click the widget, you can add the action here, and on tap, you can navigate to a page or launch a URL, set state. I think this is really cool. They even have the set state update uh, action, as they should, as they should. Um, so you can try and go set any of those properties if you wanted to. All right. Well, I'll stop there with this tutorial. I'll be doing more reviews on Flutterflow in the coming days. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a taste of it. And uh, I think it's really cool. I think it's going to speed up the design process. I think that there's uh, there's there's bits to lack. There's a bit of a lack of features on the back end. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and so this, you know, like any useful UI pl bu app building uh, website has limitations to what it can do. So anyways, I'll end up with that. Uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you next time.